Oh, Merlin. We're about to start shooting this episode and it's about loose leash walking and Merlin just peed all over his leash. Dog walks can be really, really frustrating. Which is unfortunate because they should be really, really lovely. Like a time well spent with you and your dog, right? But some dogs will pull a lot. Some dogs will bark at a lot of things and that can all sort of hurt the positive experience, I guess. Good boy. There's a lot of conventional thinking on how to uh, correct some of those issues. But I kind of have trouble with it a bit because I find it to be a little control centric and it's just not my style. So I'd like to introduce you to an alternative. It's called loose leash walking. The most difficult thing about loose leash walking for most people isn't so much the training aspect. It's more about shifting your mindset from one that's uh, oriented around traditional ideas of obedience to a mindset that's more okay with giving your dog more agency to do dog things. Now, I know some of you might be a little bit afraid about issues surrounding dominance. We're gonna address that later, but for now, trust me, you don't need to worry about it. Let's move our focus from control to motivation and cooperation. Once we understand what motivates a dog, we can use that to encourage them to be polite. Basically, this is about nice manners on the leash. Okay, so dogs have these really incredible noses and they experience the world in a way that we'll probably never fully understand or appreciate. And I think that we should embrace that. We should let dogs smell the things. We should let dogs be dogs. But these noses are also the culprit in a lot of pulling cases. You see, dogs do what works. And so when they're walking and they're pulling, they're getting to places faster, they're getting to smell the smells sooner, and every single step forward is reinforcing. And that's why this is such a common issue. If we can teach them to be polite about it, we can have the best of both worlds. They have lots of smelling and no pulling. So rather than competing with your dog's needs and creating frustration, why don't we use our dog's needs to our advantage while also providing an enriching experience by letting them smell? Loose leash walking isn't technically that hard to train, but it can be challenging because it takes a lot of discipline and consistency. So the training basics at a glance look like this. If your dog's pulling, you stop. Now when they give you some slack, you want to mark and reward that opportunity and give them a treat. I want you to always give them a treat in the treat sweet spot, right around here where we'd prefer that they spend most of their time. Now our goal is here are to have loose leashes and loose hands. You notice when I'm walking these guys, sometimes they're up in front or behind, left or right. Sometimes they stop and just fully smell something for a couple of minutes. And what I like to do is give them the slack that they take, but as they slow down or catch up, I just reel it back in. Hey, do you mind holding them for me? Yeah, man. Feel good? What flavor, man? <laughs> With a mercury espresso flavor. It's my favorite. Yeah, okay. So as you've seen, Ten and Merlin can walk pretty nicely on leash. So you might be surprised to know that they're both retired sled dogs. Merlin was actually a star lead dog in a large kennel in the Rocky Mountains. So 
pulling is kind of in his bones. When I first had these two, I definitely had some frustrating times. They were very capable of dragging me around quite a bit. But I always reminded myself not to take it out on them because that wouldn't have taught them anything. They would have just learned that sometimes I get frustrated and kind of scary. I had to remind myself to be more proactive and more prepared for my walks, to start every walk with a little training session. But eventually it came around and it was two lovely dogs that walk really nicely on leash. And we enjoy our walks now. They're very cooperative and harmonious. I'm glad that I did it. After you. I think there's a lot of pressure on people to walk their dogs in a really particular way. And I think that contributes to the frustration that some people experience because their dog doesn't necessarily walk uh, perfectly. But I think we should take it easy and we should take it easy on our dogs as well. I think it's fine if they walk ahead of you, walk behind you, or even stop to smell things for ages. I think that's actually totally fine. And we can let them do that. We could even encourage it. The walk is for them after all. Come here, hey Tim, up, up, up. <laughs> Guys, if you like that video, uh, please comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, you can like, you can follow, do all those things, share it. That would be great. Uh, we've got lots more coming this summer, so uh, I hope you like to uh, see what we've got what we've got cooking up. Okay. Take care. Thanks.